understands what the word consensus means. Just pop your hand up like that if you do. Okay, nearly all of you, just in case there's a few wobbly ones, so I'll just really make it clear for you. Consensus is when everybody in the room reaches the same place, and that's making a decision, it's being in agreement, it, where there's full buy-in from everybody. And that's quite different from compromise, which is a word you've probably heard before. And compromise, if you don't know fully, is where people will have made adjustments to what they wanted in order to reach a point where everybody is in, agree in agreement. So that's not necessarily a consensus. People have made adjustments to what they're willing to agree on in order to get to the point of group agreement. And also, it's not majority. As, as with things like Brexit, uh, you, you probably know very well majority. 51% is a majority, despite you know, that not singing, sitting too well with most people, let's say. So tonight we're not seeking a majority, we're not seeking compromise, we are seeking a consensus. Now, I'm very glad to report that this is not a pass or fail module. So if we don't reach consensus, that's okay too, because sometimes you don't. And what that means is you need further, ses further sessions in order to break down the problem or the issue into smaller <coughs> component parts, or to have meetings with small groups in order to get to group consensus at a later date. So hopefully that's a lot clearer about what I'm trying to achieve today. Now, I scratched my head, I stroked my chin, and I said to myself, well, what topic shall I pick? Because, you know, the world is my oyster. Well, I decided to choose something fairly close to home. I have a room full of people who are intelligent, keen, and into personal uh, development. So why wouldn't I ask the people who are great thinkers, they're people who, who like to think differently, and who want to do more of what we're doing now? Am I right? Yeah, cool. Yes, yeah. great, fantastic, good, good, good. So, I would like to find a consensus tonight, if I can, on how to proceed with improving PR, public relations, for our club. I don't want to just choose a random subject that doesn't mean anything, or there's no real purpose to it. I want to choose something that we can actually use, because we're going to be spending a few minutes on this. Let's make it work for us. Now, currently, the public relations officer for our club, she's not here tonight, unfortunately, but she's been working incredibly hard. In fact, she was public relations officer last year as well, and she wanted to stay on to build on her fantastic foundation. And that includes writing articles that have been published widely, pressing some members for blog articles, which have been put onto our website, which helps us with the search engines looking for us, and also prizing out of us little nuggets to go on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn so that we can have these little pockets of presence and then when we see them we can share them. Now that has been fairly effective up to now. It's hit and miss. I know that we have enjoyed a, a certain amount of success in January. I'm pretty sure that this is a 50-50 success rate of people really wanting to up their game and really press on with their personal development as much as us putting ourselves out there for us to be found. But I think it would be really lovely if we could put together some kind of plan where we would have consistent presence that calls in new people to the club all throughout the year because we're, we're almost like <coughs> Shropshire's best kept secret and we don't want to be a secret. I'd love to be sitting in front of a room of 30 people. That'd be really great. That's really up in my game. So what I wanted to do is just to start with grab some ideas from you, and I'm gonna pop them on the list here. There is no such thing as a bad idea. It can be as wacky as you like, it can be something that you've seen someone else do, something that no one's done before. There is no bad idea, and I'll capture them all, and then we will re refine them <coughs> and see if we can talk about perhaps a top five that we could try going forward. Are there any questions at this point? <laughs> I'll talk to you. Thanks, 
Shropshire Star, because we do a lot with the rugby team that I help in the Shropshire Star. So when you've got a notable event, mm -hmm. they're very keen. So in your competitions, and then you can add your testimonials into an event that's actually happening. And that's <coughs> got a good circulation. So events and contests, did you say that? Yes. So something that's actually happening rather than just the fact that we meet and then you wrap it up with you know we've got this massive competition coming up on these dates anyone can come along finish it off with and by the way we meet on a weekly you know but you know when we do in, in the Ramada hotel indeed and if you happen to talk to them on a slow news day you get a whole page whether you want it or not yeah <laughs> and then the more success you have the more they'll hook into you yes as well so uh and photographs because Words are fine, but photographs mean more. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. Lovely. Thank you, John. Anyone? Oh, here we go. Uh, I'd host some kind of like networking event. Um, so where you can basically get lots of different businesses together, but there's people from Toastmasters to do, you know, to do talks. Um, and kind of spread the, the image that way. Can you elaborate a bit more, Pete? Yeah, so, I mean, either... Toastmasters could host their own networking events and invite people along, or um, get themselves ac uh, um, across to an existing networking event. So, I mean, for example, I heard about Toastmasters at TEDx uh, in September, um, and I think I spoke to a couple, few of the guys from here, from there, and TEDx is obviously a, a massive networking event as well as obviously the speeches. Um, and just through here about there, that's how I came along, so yeah. Great, thanks for that, Pete. Matt? 
Um, so I worked in different organisations, so I think, um, so I work at Vodafone, there's 900 people where I work, a lot of development through people taking on new roles that require public speaking, Bet365 down the roads, 1100 people, that's 2000, you wouldn't need much to get a room full of 30 if you were to target people, um, places with big opportunity. And Stoke in general doesn't have its own branch. That is true. I'm going to write to Stoke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like the mafia. <laughs> it is a problem for people in Stoke because it's just the, 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 we're the nearest or Warrington, so there's a big gap in Stoke. Yeah, that's it. So you probably want to get a few more people from Stoke to here and they learn our ways, the Toastmasters. And they can go back to Stoke and build their own club and everyone's a winner. <laughs> Do you want to go? Sorry, Sam. I, I'm reading a book by Mal Malcolm Gladwell, which is called The Tipping Point. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if we want this to become an epidemic, mm -hmm. then we need to know who the connectors are across the area, rather than just trying to channel it in just a normal event. So it's understanding who those people are and what influence they have, targeting them, and then when they tell their people, they'll buy into it more. So. Uh, and kind of new to the area from from having been in the military, mm -hmm. but the uh, but the connectors to me are <coughs> there must be influence groups like your uh, business forums, Shropshire business forums, things like that, where there's networks already in place where one person might know about fifty, and might say, oh yes, I know the very people that would benefit from what you do. Mm -hmm. So it'd be worth spending some time actually with everyone mm. brainstorming who they truly believe are people that they know that can influence a wider group mm, mm. without just kind of blind targeting yes gotcha. and you can you can talk i don't want to use the word targeting in the bad sense <laughs> but you know what i mean yes <laughs> not crosshairs yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, could it, it sort of follows on from targeting organisations, but I, I heard about this through a, through a trade magazine relative to my profession, so I don't know whether it, it, there was an article in there about Toastmasters, so I don't know whether you could potentially get more articles into trade magazines or even, even just flat out advertising in there. Great, there's a hand over this side as well. Yeah, I just wanted to say something that I thought might be a conjunction with testimonials. <laughs> I'd be very interested to know some guests that we have who perhaps don't come back why that is why, and maybe if it was an anonymous survey that we could mm -hmm. fill in that we could send, email them a link and they could give us purely honest feedback as to obviously before the, con before the contest we had 13 guests back in January so we obviously we've got some back tonight which is great but it's, uh, plenty that haven't returned, so maybe that's because they're busy or whatever, but I'd love to know what those reasons are. Okay, great, thank you. Universities. I mentioned to my daughter about this evening on, and she, do, she does presentations at university, but she's scared out of mind every time she has to do one, even though she's doing the best, best lot of three years now. Yeah. So they'd be, to me, they'd be an ideal place to promote I spoke to a guy, um, Alex Pellex, master at the weekend, and I spoke to a guy um, who spoke. I bought his book in the end, and and I because I, I was thinking he was going to say, oh well, I joined, an, um, you know, it was part of his talk that he actually decided to do stand up for a year, um, and I said, well, we should have joined Toastmasters, you know, and I spoke to him afterwards, and he said, Toastmasters is great, he said, but it's. Um, because you're in a room full of people with positive feedback, you, it, it, it's kind of not quite like the real world. And I said, yeah, but surely you want that safe environment. And so that's, that's really what you've got to promote. It's a way of being safe to, to practice. And I think that's what people are scared of. Um, you know, after the last talk, at one, I think I, I bombed completely. I went home and I spoke to my son. And he said, but why did you do it, Mum? And I said, because I want to practice, and I want to practice in an 
in an environment that gives me some positive feedback that I feel, yeah, I know what it's like to kind of not know how to do this properly, mm -hmm. so I know how it feels. So I, I learn from it, and it, and that's the thing, it's doing it in a safe environment and promoting that as, as something that's really, really positive. Um, so people perhaps don't feel quite as scared at coming and yeah. doing it. Yeah, thanks Lisa. Um, I'll add to that, um, when you've been in Toastmasters for a few years and you end up doing some of the more advanced projects, you can prime the audience to be hostile, <laughs> <laughs> as I have done on a few occasions, yeah. when you actually ask the audience to heckle you uh, or disagree with you on purpose, even if they actually agree with you, because you want to experience how to handle those difficult situations. Mm. So there are opportunities okay. to, albeit slightly falsely, mm -hmm. create that atmosphere and feel that oh, yeah. <laughs> horrible feeling. Um, definitely. Right. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop there with the capture. That's brilliant. Very helpful. Now, the tra challenging bit is we've got about five minutes left, <laughs> maybe four, and we need to pick our top five, if we can, that we would all agree are a great starting point. That doesn't mean we're discounting all of the other ideas. It just means, you know, it's a mountain, all of this. Let's just start with bite-sized chunks. And I'm thinking actually three might be better just three to start with, and then we can have another go at another three when we've tried those. Does that sound like something we could do? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Fantastic. So we'll start on this page, because we're on this page at the moment. Do you think that targeting organisations, large organisations, is a priority, one of the first things that we should do, or is it something we could do later? Matt? I think uh, as a numbers game, if you're targeting the most number of people, then that's got to be higher on the list because you've got more chance of success. So organisations, large organisations, seem to be a good idea to me. Okay. And yeah, with, within large organisations, you will have people have dedicated roles to improve the employees. Everybody will probably have a um, uh, an assessment every year, and they will try to help them. So giving them this as a option because you've got the advertising of the people who have improved here. So on the videos, so it's finding those people out and then chatting to them and then showing them the videos of, of people saying, this is how I've improved, and then the advertising of the Toastmasters, and you're making their job easy for them by doing that. Mm. So it sounds like those two are, are linked. They are in conjunction mm. with each other for success. <laughs> <laughs> I would so, agree with that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so what third item would we put with that as a, a suite of three things to start? What do you think belongs with those two? So we've got using the testimonial videos, to support that approach to the large organisations. Um, we've got <laughs> putting things in the paper, we've got networking events, we've got um, reaching out to Stoke, we've got identifying the connectors, more articles for things like trade magazines or approaching universities. I think the, the safe space promoting that is because that's comfortable for everyone in the safe space, isn't it? So that's part of the, the top that's three. Saying, well, no, it's not just down to me, no. <laughs> questioning, question, questioning, question mark at the end. Uh, would everyone uh, agree that that belongs together in, in the top three to start with, to try? The networking fits in with the other two. I think the networking fits. Yeah. 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 And then the, the safe space would be... how you then go on to describe <coughs> what you're doing. Yeah, the safe space is within those things, really, yeah. is it? Yes, it and is. Thing on its own. No. And the, tar the, the networking... It's tied with this, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. And it's, it's a, a, the real question is how you get into those networks. Yeah. So there's networks that, that I've been to and you've been to and Mags has been to where people come up to you and say, well, how, how come you can stand up and talk about your business so easily? Mm. Mm. See, because I go to Toastmasters, come along, and that's why some people have come to this club and other clubs. That's why I came. Yes. Exactly, because I saw you two. Yeah, so it's by, by example, yes. in a way. Yes. But with other networks, there might not be anybody in there who's a Toastmaster. How do you get into those? And the same way, the same thing applies to these big companies 
if you could only get into them and mm. talk to them, you know that you could sell it because the money that people spend on presentation skills training mm. is just a weekend and it's all a, week, a day and it's all Absolutely. over. Whereas this is regular drip, 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 and it sticks. And I have a tap into multiple corporates through Floyd on the District 91 side in London who could give me more corporate examples of the testimonials if we don't have the corporate flavour. Couldn't we write to these local companies and offer to come and help them? Yes, so I'm going to say yes and. I did that about six years ago and it's like throwing them in the bin because nobody ever responds. But and you need personal yeah. Yeah. contact. Okay. I think personal contact's the way and some of them were responding saying we already have training partners in place, we can't entertain something new. So it's about having thick skin as well to some extent. But so if I say it's a bit chicken and egg, but I think we need to do the testimonials mm. yeah. first so that we can do the other activities. Does that yeah. make sense? Yes. So I'll put one there and then two here. And then I think this and the other one are both three. Would you say that's a fair sum up of where we've got to? Yes. 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 And, and yes. we know that this is intrinsic, this belongs yeah. to all of it. Fantastic. Thank you so much for taking part so rapidly and helping me with all these ideas. Because not only will it help our club, Jill and I are area directors for other clubs as well. So if there are any clubs which have members in that are struggling, we're not in competition with those clubs. We're all part of a big family. And quite often you have a dip in membership and it can feel a bit wobbly when you think, oh, there's only six people in the audience. I don't want the club to fold because I, I want to come to this club. I want to practice in front of these lovely people. I don't want to have to go to Birmingham to do it. I live in Telford. <laughs> So thank you, thank you, thank you for lending your brains tonight. I do believe we have reached consensus over those one, two, three, and thank you very much for helping me.